Welcome to our series on presentation skills. In a previous video, we covered how to set the stage for your presentation. In this video, we're going to provide some thoughts and considerations for designing your presentation. So, in this video, we'll address selecting your visual aids, setting up cues and prompts, both for you and for your audience, thinking about how to use multimedia sources and some of the issues associated with doing so, the pros and cons of using note cards during your presentation, how to create an effective slide deck if you want to use one as part of your presentation, and supplementing your presentation with handouts or other resources that will provide your audience with information on learning more about your topic. So when it comes to using visual aids and cues and creating prompts, it's really about making your content come alive and walking yourself and your audience through your presentation beginning to end. So this complements something that we talked about in the previous video, and that's about choosing a topic, refining it, and then organizing and mapping your way through it from beginning to end. By doing so, you're offering guideposts along the way, primarily for yourself to trigger your memory, but also as part of the process of learning for your audience, it helps them connect concepts when they can see how it all fits together. It also makes for a smoother flow and a transition from one topic to another, one slide to another, one example to another, and for you as the presenter, you want to make sure you know whatever's coming next, whether it be whatever's on that next note card, that next slide, or that next, next section of your presentation. This is really about telling your story. An effective presentation often flows like a story. It has a clear beginning, a middle, and an end. It has a clear purpose, it has examples, and it's memorable to the audience. Using visual aids, it's important to remember these are just tools. It's not to be in place of the information you're providing, and it should assist yourself and the audience with understanding and remembering the information. Visual aids represent ideas and concepts, perhaps even processes or amounts of data from your sources, from your research, or from the field. Visual aids can really make information more relatable and memorable for your audience and to you as well. It might be that you're having trouble rem remembering a certain piece of your presentation and having a visual cue or something that you can refer to assist you with remembering and incorporating that information into your presentation more effectively. It is important to keep in mind that any visual aids need to be accessible to the entire audience. It only works when everyone can see it. So some considerations for non-digital visual aids, here are three general types. Artifacts are objects, representations of the idea, the concept that you're trying to drive home. Often it's something that not only the presenter is physically holding or sharing, it's also typically provided to the audience to look at more closely. There's also the use of flip charts or whiteboards that as a presenter, you can write on as you go along to help make your points and to provide something that is visual to your audience. And lastly, a content poster, something that has a summary of your data, some images, some charts, so that your audience can view all the information in one place. So how do you pick a visual aid that will work best for your presentation if using a visual aid at all? Well, part of it depends on the size of the room. Again, if a small room is what you'll be presenting in, or even presenting remotely from a platform like Zoom, the audience likely can see something that is smaller, something you can point to, and perhaps something that you can share with everyone. So you want to consider, for example, if there's a whiteboard in the room, will your writing be visible to the entire audience? That can be a whiteboard that's provided, one that you bring, or if you're presenting via Zoom, a whiteboard that is part of the Zoom platform. How big is your audience? Think about how many of them you want to involve, and if you are going to involve any, you want everyone to have the opportunity to feel like they could be involved. So let's say that's an artifact that you bring. If it's a small audience, the likelihood is everyone can have a turn 
holding, looking at the, the object, the artifact that you brought to learn more about it. But if it's a large room, that likely wouldn't be the case uh, for a large audience. And then the proximity of the audience to you. How close are they to you? It could be that you're on a stage behind a podium. It could be that you're presenting at a conference and you are standing next to a poster and the audience is constantly changing with people walking up to you to hear about your topic. These are some ideas that will help you determine what visual aid might be useful. Multimedia resources often are used during presentations, but it's also important to consider whether you'd want to incorporate one at all and what you need to be thinking about. It might be a video from YouTube, a TED Talk to help drive home part of your point, or maybe an audio podcast. So think about the idea of whether it would be better to play an entire video or podcast or just cite from it. So, for example, how long is your presentation? If your presentation is only a few minutes, it likely wouldn't make sense to allocate a big chunk of your time to having your audience watch a video or listen to an entire podcast. Do you need to have everyone have a shared experience for them to understand the rest of your presentation? If your presentation is a bit longer, it can be useful to play part of or all of a video or audio podcast and then build from there. What about just having some quotes or referring to part of a podcast or a video? Will that work instead of playing the whole thing? There are some technology considerations when it comes to using any of these multimedia sources. One is that when presenting and having videos or podcasts, it often requires high bandwidth. And that's both on and off site. If you're, if you're on site, whether you're in a classroom or at a conference, Often there are many sources trying to draw from the same internet. Also, if you are pre presenting from offsite and you have people from many different places tuned in to watch your presentation live, it can be difficult to stream an audio or video file. Also, you need to make sure that if you're going to use audio or video, any of the hardware software you're using needs to be able to handle it and needs to be up to date so that you can play your file smoothly as part of your presentation. You always want to have a backup plan though when you're using audio or video. Even when you've planned and you have played during your practice the video or the audio file, if it doesn't work in the moment, have a backup plan for how you are going to make the points that were made through those video or audio offerings. Remember too, there are some concerns about accessibility. If there is an audio or video file, you want to make sure that you have captions or transcripts available to make the content accessible to any particular person in the audience there or from a distance. And it can be helpful to, to verbally describe a picture or image if there's somebody with vision impairment who will be participating. The use of note cards during a presentation has been around as long as we can remember. And it can be really helpful to use note cards to organize your thoughts, determine your big points, as well as your follow-up examples and references to your data. This was referred to back in the first video on setting the stage as a way to, to organize your thoughts, your points, your information to get ready for your presentation. When it comes to using the note cards during the actual presentation, there are pros and cons. So some of the pros, it can remind you of the next point with something the audience doesn't have access to. Maybe it's something just to jog your memory that is memorable to you and meaningful to you, but not necessarily something you have to share with the audience. If you need to make an in-the-moment change, you can easily reshuffle your note cards to change either an emphasis or the order of your presentation. And when you just have the note cards and not the projection of something behind you, it keeps you as the focus. You are the presenter and you are the deliverer of the information. There are some potential cons though. When holding note cards, it can be tempting to read directly from the cards, which tends to lose the audience and it tends to lead to pauses in your own presentation. If you are shuffling the cards, that in and of itself as a gesture can distract the audience and 
it has happened that a presenter has dropped their cards and so their structure literally falls apart. Many people use a slide deck platform as part of their presentation. This also was referred to in setting the stage. There are lots of examples. There's PowerPoint, which as a USM student, you have access to right from your My USM portal in the Microsoft 365 suite. There's also the Apple version you might have on your computer if you have a Mac, and that is Keynote. As a USM student, you also have the entire Google suite, so you have access to Google Slides. And some presenters like to use a platform like Prezi, which has animation and motion as part of the moving from topic to topic. Regardless of which you pick, all of these offer a visual component to your presentation, which can be very useful. They can be available as mobile phone apps for access for your audience and for you as the presenter. It can be used both in person as well as sharing it virtually. If you're working on the presentation with a partner or a group, each of these can be used collaboratively to create the group presentation together. And then the final product can be shared with participants after the presentation. It can either be shared digitally via a link or a download or printed off as a handout. When designing your slide deck, there are a number of steps you can take to make sure that it's going to be high quality, it's going to be easy to read, easy to follow, and truly an effective visual aid for your presentation. We'll go over six of those. The first is to choose a template. That's what your slide looks like before you put any content on it. You might have a number of themes you can choose or even a blank template. You want to pick something that's going to work with the content that you're going to be populating the slides with, whether it be pictures, whether it be data, whether it be text. It's helpful to experiment up front so that you don't get well into your design process and then realize you need to make a major change. Select your font. You want one that's easy to read and consistent throughout the presentation. We'll go over this more in a few slides. Choose color intentionally. It's not just about making a less bland presentation. Typically, using color intentionally and effectively helps to provide contrast between information on a slide and grouping information together. Put a title at the top of each slide that represents each of your main ideas. If you watched the setting the stage video, consider these to be your big rocks. List key points on each slide, which will prompt you to remember your explanations and your examples. And then insert any images, pictures, diagrams, representation of data, for you and your audience that will help the information come alive, make it more understandable and more memorable. We mentioned using color. As you can see here, color was used to not just group information, but also to distinguish between categories of information. When it comes to fonts, you can see how, while the fonts on the left might look interesting, they actually can be difficult to read. It's much more effective to pick fonts that stand out, that are simple, and that provide some contrast when used on a slide. When it comes to any text that you're going to put in, it's important to think about what are the fewest number of words I can use to jog my memory and help make my point. The first thing you want to think about is, how do I avoid paragraphs? Why avoid paragraphs on a slide deck? Right now, you've been reading. As an audience member, looking at a slide deck, when a paragraph comes up, the natural reaction is to try to read word for word what's up on the screen which means, as an audience member, you're not paying attention to what the presenter is saying. In contrast, just use text in bullets. So these are used for you as cues or prompts to remind you of the points that you wanted to make, 
without it being word for word. And these are usually made up of phrases or key terms, not full sentences. And by doing that, it helps you to avoid reading directly from the slide, which also means you can maintain more eye contact with your audience. This keeps the audience's focus on what you are saying as opposed to what's on the screen. And it also can be helpful to make the bullets animate or move one by one. So that can help prevent the audience reading as well as being overloaded by all the information that is on the screen at any given time. If you're going to use images, really make sure that the image is relevant to the point that you are making. So this is another way to cue or prompt a talking point for yourself to remember what you wanted to say, that aspect of the story, that aspect of uh, providing a relevant example, something that is memorable to you and the audience. Because remember, as it's been said, a picture is worth a thousand words. It adds a visual image to the mental picture that the audience is trying to put together about the information that you've been presenting on, as well as a visual image for you in your mental picture within the story of your presentation. And this helps really to make a more memorable story when there are such images. So consider using something as real as possible. Let's say that we're talking about pizza. There's lots of clip art out there about pizza. This doesn't necessarily look that appealing to you and might not really make the point or give the reaction or response that you're hoping from the audience. Instead, pick something that really triggers the audience's memory and senses, something that is truly relevant to your point and will, again, make it more memorable. Diagrams and data charts can be very effective in summarizing lots of information and in making sure that your audience can remember that information. For those who watched the Setting the Stage video, you might recall that using a mind map to organize your presentation was an effective approach. The beauty of using a mind map is that you can save it as an image and incorporate it into your slide deck. Also, there are lots of ways to incorporate data in a way that is visually appealing, provides contrast, and again, is easy not just for the audience to interpret in the moment, also to remember. When designing your presentation, think about whether providing supplemental resources may be important. So why even do this? Well, first, it reduces the pressure to fit in everything that you wanted to say about a topic or to find a way to incorporate all of the supporting information. It also makes it easier to identify the content you are going to include. You can decide, I'm going to be providing a handout or links to a video or an audio podcast, I'll provide that all to the audience. I don't need to spend a lot of time on that during my actual presentation. It can reduce the pressure on the audience as well to take detailed notes, knowing that there are going to be supplemental resources available. And it also can increase the audience's investment in the topic when the audience knows they have an easy avenue to take a next step to learn more. So what might some of these supplemental resources look like? It could be a summary sheet you put together of key data points from your visual aids. It could be that you do a physical printout or provide an electronic copy of your slide deck. Again, letting the audience know ahead of time that you are going to be providing this after the presentation is complete. It could be a reference list of all of your information sources so the audience can go read more, watch more, investigate more about specific co components and aspects of your presentation. And you could offer a to learn more list. It could be articles, books, videos, websites, not all that you necessarily have investigated yourself, but that you recognize could help the audience learn more if they'd like to or need to do so. Well, thank you for watching this presentation on designing your presentation. We hope that this and other videos in this series are helpful for you as a presenter.